Actually, let me go ahead and ask you. Does anybody know what absolute value means? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, if it has a minus sign or yep. Yeah. All right, correct. The technical definition is, is that it's distance from zero, but what she said is right. So when, you do off, when, you, when you do absolute value of a number, it makes it positive. If it's already positive, it's positive anyways. So basically, the short definition is it makes it positive. So first of all, absolute value of negative 3. Well, if you make it positive, it's 3. That means it's 3 units away from 0 on the number line. You just like multiply it by negative 1? No, you don't multiply, don't multiply it by negative 1 because if it's positive, it stays positive. You wouldn't multiply that by negative 1. What does that mean? Oh, that's, that's the easy part. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, now, absolute value of negative x. That's one that a lot of people put weird stuff for. I've seen one and all kinds of stuff. When you have the absolute value of negative x in general, any negative number, it just becomes positive, absolute value of positive x, not x. That's another one I've seen. Okay, Absolute value bars don't go away on the x. Make sure you write that down. Absolute value of negative x equals the absolute value of x. Okay, um, and there's kind of a proof over here as to why that is. You would take the absolute value of negative 1 and it would become positive 1, but the absolute value bars for the x wouldn't go away. All right, so, you know, the question is how do you solve this equation? Well, you know, your first step I'll go ahead and tell you is you want to you get these absolute value bars by itself. Okay, just like treat it like a variable. So everything that's not in the absolute value bar, you want to move to the other side. All right, isolate the absolute value from everything else, and that'd be step one. And he's right. In this particular case, we're going to add five to both sides. So I'm just going to rewrite my equation here. Now remember, when you solve an equation, you actually do the reverse of PEMDAS. You would add before you divide, right? That's why he said that. So we got negative 9 times 6x plus 5 equals negative 9. Okay, what would you do next to get the absolute value bars by itself? Okay, what what is on this side that's... Good, perfect. What's on this side that's not in the absolute value bar is negative 9. What's it doing to the absolute value? What's well, actually multiplying, right? So therefore, you would do the opposite, and you would divide by negative 9. And it would cancel what's on the left, and you'd be left with absolute value of 6x plus 5 equals 1. Another thing that I see students do is they, they try to change what's in here. You will never change what's in here. Like I've seen, like for example, I've seen somebody go from, let's say it said absolute value of 6x minus 5. They change it to a plus because it's in absolute value bars. That's completely not correct. Like you don't you don't change what's inside of it. Okay, so just follow the steps I'm thinking here. So we've got step one that's complete. The absolute value bars, whatever's inside is isolated. Okay, it's going to lead us to the next step. Okay, we're going to break this into two equations. It's actually simple, okay? One equation is the same without the absolute value bars, okay? In other words, instead of writing absolute value of 6x plus 5 equals 1, I'm just going to delete the absolute value bars for the first equation. So it's going to be 6x plus 5 equals 1, okay? So you're literally just deleting the absolute value bars. Whoops. Okay, the other equation, basically you're just going to take whatever's on the right and make it negative. All right, so I'm going to write 6x plus 5 equals negative 1. Now I do want to explain why we do that. The short answer is because the absolute value of negative 1 is the same as the absolute value of 1 which means these two will also be equal. 
it'll give you an X value that'll work when you plug it back in. We'll plug our X values back in and you'll see why it works. But it's because when you take the absolute value of something, whether it's negative or positive, you get the same thing back. All right. And then from there, we're just going to solve. Okay. So how would you solve this equation on the left? Subtract five. Okay. Okay. So we get six x equals negative four. Now what? Five by six. I'm going to simplify that to negative two thirds. Okay. Let's solve the one on the right. Six x plus five equals negative one. Subtract 5. In this case, we get negative 6. 6. X equals negative 1. So yes, every single question on here has two answers. So for the last step, when checking for plugging back in, just write out the original equation and then plug in both numbers. So it was negative 9 times 6X plus 5. Now, in place of the x, I'm going to plug in my first value, negative 2 thirds. All the in absolute value bars, minus 5, does that equal negative 14? In other words, when I plug it in, uh, is the left and right going to equal each other? Well, first of all, what's 6 times negative 2 thirds? Negative 4. 6 divided by 3 is 2, 2 times negative 2. Okay, and then so we're going to have negative 9 times the absolute value of 1. What is the absolute value of 1? What's the absolute value? 1, right? The absolute value of 1 is 1. You don't flip the sign, you just make sure it's positive. So you end up with negative 9 minus 5. Does that equal negative 14? Does negative 9 minus 5 equal negative 14? Yes. Yes, thank you. It worked. Okay. All right, now let's plug in negative 1 and see if it works. And here's where, you'll, where you will start to see why you have two answers and why this happened. Well, we set the right side of the equation equal to negative 1 because this is now going to give me a negative 1 and set the absolute value bars, which is the same as 1. Okay. That's why you set the right side equal to negative 1, the negative version of whatever the left side is, because it will work. Okay? So we still we'll still end up with um, what, so what's that? So you have negative 1? 1. So you still just end up with negative 9 times 1, which is negative 9 minus 5, and that still equals negative 14. All right, so that's it. That's all you have to do for this. Any questions on that?